I asked the question on my Instagram, on the YouTube community tab. If you guys don't know that what that is, I post like videos and no, I post photos and questions and that sort of stuff there. And you can interact with me. Instagram, I'm always posting stories and reels. You can interact with me there, DM me. Fortunately, YouTube doesn't have DM, but regardless. And I asked you guys how you're doing. How are you doing? What are you struggling with? What do you need help with? And today's video, I'm going to answer the questions that you posed in that question box area, because I think it's gonna help not only the geek crew, the questions you asked, but also people who are just coming to this channel that don't know where everyone's at. And if you did not know, and you are no new to the geek crew, we're very kind people. We're very nice. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Um, people have like entire dialogues and no one makes fun of anybody. Everyone's at different stages and people who have been gardening for 30, 40 years, even me myself with a degree in soil science, we're learning all the time. No one knows everything. And if they tell you they know everything, then they're full of themselves and they should probably, I don't know check it that yeah they're full of themselves so everyone's always learning and that's just how gardening goes <laughs> so first up we have yes and i live in the prairies and we are having mood swings 10 degrees yesterday minus 17 next week yes i live in the prairies too and uh it's insane i'm editing right now and that is the snow drift outside my house it's insane there's a blizzard outside right now um, and two days before that, it was melting. So I'm over it. It's, it's all good though. We need the water, so I'm not gonna complain too much. Climbing the learning curve is my biggest problem. Just when I think I figured it out, your channel helps a lot. You're very knowledgeable. I'm in Florida and I find a ton of great stuff on your channel. Thanks, Dr. Soil Science. Well, thank you, Ron. I believe your name is Ron. And I'm glad that you're learning and the steep learning curve. I mean, it's steep until it's not. And then when it's not steep, Ron, you're gonna, you're gonna put yourself in a position where it's gonna get steep because you're gonna be like, wow, I mastered carrots and tomatoes. Now I'm gonna try to grow loofahs and exotic melons. And it's always steep. It's never gonna level off for you. <laughs> it's just gonna keep going up and up and up because when you're like okay I figured out container gardening you're gonna be like okay now I want to garden the soil and then once I figure out gardening the soil I really want to maximize it's just you're always learning so be prepared for it never to end prairie prepper here one I want to say one thing before I continue when you guys comment on my videos if I don't get to your comment does not mean I don't see it I see every comment, even the nasty ones. Um, but I recognize tags, like people's names and their thumbnails. So if you're continually commenting, I know who you are. I know how often you're commenting. I also take note of what you've said and where you struggle and what zone you're in. I pay a lot of attention to these. So when I get someone who's like constantly commenting and they're always engaging, I make a point of curating videos towards those individuals because I know that they're invested in the channel and I know that they're going to watch it. <laughs> so if you ever feel like I'm, I don't, I'm just a face on a screen, I don't know who you are, I'm not engaging, I know who you are. 100% know who you are. All these names I'm seeing on here, I'm like, yeah, you guys comment all the time. I know exactly who you are, as creepy as that may sound. And same thing on Instagram. If you guys are commenting on this and you're like, I wanna interact with her more, hit me up on Instagram. I will, you can ask anyone, comment down below. You know I answer my DMs. I'll have entire conversations with you guys. And it doesn't even have to be about plants. I, there's one, there's people who send me like YouTube videos on like singers and books to read. And hey, if you got any good romance novels, I'm a romance novel addict. If I, I should show you my bookcase next level. It's a lot. 
it's a lot. Um, yeah. Who's your favorite romance author? Who's your favorite book author? Fiction only. I run, when I read for enjoyment, I read fiction because my entire life resolves around nonfiction. And so I just need a break sometimes. I have two favorite authors, Penelope Douglas and Karen Marie Moaning. Those are my two favorites. Anyways, I digress. Prairie Prepper. <laughs> I went on a tangent there because Prairie Prepper, you are always commenting all the time. I'm struggling with keeping my cool. So tempted to go overboard with a seed starting right now. I did keep myself reined in with the early tomato planting this year though. Only three little determinate babies for me right now. No more indoor tomato trees this year. Yes, that's my struggle all the time. I do start my stuff early. And the reason, the reason for that is because I have to make the videos for you guys. And so I need to be like a step ahead of you. Like usually I like to be a week or two ahead of you. So I do start stuff early, but it's not because, it's not because I should. It's because I'm insane and I have a YouTube channel. Okay, Chris, no problems with seed starting or seedlings. My problem lies with all the seed packets at Coleman's look like, Coleman's, I don't know what Coleman's is. Must be like a, somewhere that sells seeds. Look like, look like a, yeah, I can grow that and I don't have enough of those ones. I'm running out of grow trays and pots. Yep, that's so accurate. I do this too. But I, I don't know, I do this to an extent. I always see people, particularly YouTubers and like Instagram people that will do things like start cucumbers and zucchinis and lettuce in trays and cells. And I think it's because it gives them content. Like it gives them content to put lettuce into the garden or to transplant cucumbers or transplant zucchinis but it gets overwhelming and it's almost pointless. So while I want to say it's a great way to make more content for you guys, but it's just, it doesn't make sense to me to do that. The lettuce one does to an extent because it, it is a little bit difficult to germinate, particularly in a soil setting if you're not always watering and watching it and stuff. So that one, I guess, makes sense. The rest of them, it's kind of like make work projects. I don't know, comment down below if you know what I'm talking about, but it feels like make work projects to me. So it's like start zucchinis and cells and then transplant them outdoors. Well, that's just a make work. Like you could just put that in the ground and I'm just making you do an extra step for nothing. Like I'm making gardening more intensive and more work and more expensive and more resources for the purpose of giving you content. I don't know, it's not my thing, but going crazy. Yes, that's, I, I vibe with that, Chris. Wild Edibles, go check them out. Wild Edibles 819, they have a YouTube channel and they've been watching this channel for ages. <laughs> yeah, getting it actually done is their problem. I will do it before it's too late, lol. It's just been cold, it's warming up now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually getting it done. I've had years where I've just mentally not there. I just, the idea of starting was just too much. And those are the years, ladies and gentlemen, where you just don't do it. Seriously, don't do it. Just go to the store and buy it. I know it costs more money and just go do it. Just go buy them from the store and mentally, once you get out of the slump, you get everything outside and you start gardening, you're gonna feel a lot better but don't stress yourself out. Don't beat yourself up if you don't start seeds this year because you normally do. Trust me, you got nothing to prove to nobody. Everyone knows you can start seeds. Everyone knows you're a glorious gardener. If the motivation's not there, if the mental health is not there, skip it. Skip it or downgrade it and let the greenhouse do the work for you and then you just hand them the cash. <laughs> Sometimes it has to happen. Uh, Nutiric, oh goodness, that's not right, sorry. Uh, second question, what can you use, that means you commented down below and I haven't seen it yet. Second question, what can you use other than heat mass to increase soil temperature if you want to start more seeds than you have heat mats that require 21 degrees Celsius or above? You can use registers, like the actual registers on the floor. I've done that many a time. And you can use 
the windows of your house, particularly windows that get a ton of sun and are obviously not letting cold air in, that works wonderfully. And I've also used old school light bulbs. So whether Christmas lights, old school Christmas lights, and just like old school incandescent, is that what they're called? Whatever the hot ones are. Incandescent and fluorescent get a little bit warm. You get warm enough to make a difference. That's what I do. Or the top of your fridge. It sounds bizarre, but or the top of your fridge. Or next to your oven. I know, there's hacks everywhere. Oh, can you talk more about your plant monitoring device? Can it be outside? Is it covered from directly being rained on? Okay, so that is the Earth One Plant Sensor. If you guys did not know, I helped design this. There's like a whole group of us doing it. Um, I'm not a computer person. I'm not an app person. I'm not, I'm not device electronic savvy. I hardly know how to use this phone and I literally took courses on how to edit videos and how to film because I have no idea what I'm doing. I just added the plant science of this. So I told them what metric, metrics matter to you guys and what it needs to track. So it tracks a variety of different things. It tracks, for example, VPD. So if you've been on this channel long enough, I've talked about VPD, how important it is. It's one of the only plant sensors out there that a regular person can buy that's not ridiculously expensive that does that for you. It also tracks GDUs, so growing degree units, meaning the, I've done a video on this before, but it kind of bombed because I think it's too nerdy, but it's essentially the accumulation of units. So every plant has a, a number of units. Every disease has a number of units. Every pest, I know it's crazy, has a number of units. And every single day you accumulate so many units. If you go below zero and it freezes, your units restart. And then if it, if it doesn't go below zero, they continue to accumulate is one way to look at it. Anyway, so say you have the units for a tomato is like 18,000 units. Well, you just accumulate 100 units one day, 50 units the next day. Once you hit 1800, that's when the tomatoes are harvestable and where they're at peak ripeness. This plant sensor does the math for you, but yeah, it's really cool. Is it meant to go outside? So, no, but the reason why I can't go outside is because it needs Wi-Fi. <laughs> needs a Wi-Fi connection. Now, is that permanently what that plant sensor is gonna do? No, that is just the first plant sensor. That's the plant sensor we have right now. I personally did put mine outside last year and I put it outside just like right next to the window where it could still get Wi-Fi because I used to edit videos there so I know it gets Wi-Fi there and it seemed to be fine. It kind of got a little moisture in the cap of it and Sid, He's like, no, don't do that. Don't tell people to put them outside. So don't put them outside. Because if I say put them outside, Sid's going to be like, Ashley, come on. And yeah, anyways, it's cool. It's really cool. And yeah, I was going to tell you something, but I actually don't. I got to ask Sid if I'm allowed to share good news like that. Maybe it's too soon. Stay tuned. But yeah, Earth One Sensor. Check it out. What are your thoughts on winter sewing? That is from Dana or Dana. Um, so it's good. It does work. Uh, it works good for things like Xenia, Calendula, um, plants that you normally would direct sow, but you want a little bit of a head start. That's what it works best for. I wouldn't use winter sowing for like tomatoes or um, peppers, for example. That is something I would start indoors. I think there are some limitations to winter sowing, but it does work. Keep in mind, winter sowing works until it gets very, very cold suddenly. And if you live in an area where the temperatures tend to go pretty wild, uh, you need to watch your winter sows and you need to bring them indoors or cover them if necessary. We have Jenna saying, when do you know, knowing the best time to pot up question mark, I'm finding soil blocks are easier to identify, but cell trails trays can fool me 50% of the time. She also asked, what else would cause leggy seedlings? I have grow lights and I get them too close. Oh, if I get them too close to some leaves, the leaves start to go pale. Okay, so question number one, how to tell when to pot up. The best time to pot up is when you start having issues with watering. So if you're noticing 
a difficulty to keep up with watering. And this is where bottom watering, if you're bottom watering, you might want to back off on this just to get a feel for where everything's at. When you can't keep up with watering, that is when you bump up. That is a great time to bump up. If you are in soil blocks, you are able to identify this much quicker because it becomes much more strenuous to water and whatever. So that is when I bump up, is when things are getting difficult to water. What causes leggy seedlings? So leggy seedlings can be caused by a number of different things. What she's saying here is that she has lights and they're close, but they're so close that the leaves are going pale and but the plants are still leggy. So that tells me two things. One, three things. One is that you are probably fertilizing and or you're using a potting soil or something that has a lot of nutrients in it. Likely nitrogen, in particular nitrogen. The second thing is that you may or may not have heat, meaning either the lights are too warm because they're too close or the ambient temperature of the room that it's in is too high, which can cause legginess. So legginess isn't just lighting. It can be excess nitrogen and it can be excess heat. In the rare case, it can be a little bit of excess water can cause that, but that's you know few and far between. And that actually goes more back to the nitrogen side of things and in the availability there. So that's what I would say is going on. I'd pull the back lights back, check the heat and start fertilizing. And if you have a, if you used a potting soil that has the fertilizer in it, then what I would do, Jenna, is I would uh, pot them up into something that's inert, like a peat or something that's not like heavy in fertilizer and it'll kind of like balance itself out. People are texting me about how bad the highways are. I have friends outside of you guys. I'm joking, they're, they watch the channel, they're technically a part of the geek crew too. Anyway. Uh, MNJ Weber says, last year I sprinkled the flower heads of carrots, onions, parsnips back onto the ground in the fall to see what would grow. Although not very well spaced, I had a ton of carrots, onions, parsnips. I would love to hear smart ways to let nature do the work for me. Okay, so that is actually really cool. What they're saying is that they had flowers that developed and they sprinkled seeds out for said flowers. Letting mother nature do the work for you. One of the greatest ways to do that is to actually leave everything in place. So I've spoken about this, like how to close the garden down in the fall. If you're looking for snow capture, one of the things I said is leave the plants where they are. Let them be your, your snow fence, if you will. Just leave them where they are. Leave them in place. And one way to really get this to happen is if you leave them, break the heads off, kind of deposit them and then you mulch the soil. Like you put a layer over top, that a little bit of excess, ins extra insulation combined with potential extra moisture holding power in the spring, it, it'll work really well. And there's some plants that are gonna do well in that environment. There's some plants that don't. Depends on how cold your winter is, how much snow you have. So if you don't have a lot of snow cover and it gets really, really cold, it's probably not great. You're probably not going to get much, but if you end up with a ton of snow cover and a mild winter or a ton of cold, uh, snow cover and a really cold winter, you'll get like pumpkins and squash will come back, for example. So I always throw like my jack-o'-lanterns and stuff. They just get thrown into the, the garden, like whole. I don't even throw them in the compost and they reseed themselves all the time. There's so many different, you can do those zucchini, you name it. Just leave things in place. Let things get overgrown and leave them in place. Some things are gonna work, some things don't. Depends on the temperature, depends on the insulation. You wanna guarantee it, mulch it, put a ton of snow on it whenever you get a chance, and then cross your fingers it doesn't get too cold. Leslie says flowers and soil blocks are just sitting there, some of them. I have things in blocks that are fabulous, stumped snap dragons and fox gloves. So Leslie, I believe you are saying that you have snapdragons and foxglove and they're not doing nothing. They're just kind of hanging out. What I would do is I would use vermiculite. 
this stuff right here. I've done several, I talk about it all the time. I'm addicted to it. I would use that. I would add some water to it, add like bottom water it and put as much water as you would a regular potting soil. Sprinkle your seeds on top, put that on top of a heat mat and that will be it. You'll get it. You don't have to worry about it. They're just gonna sprout and it'll be off to the races. The reason for it is because it's got really nice levels of air, really nice levels of moisture. You combine that with heat and the nice structure, physicality of vermiculite and things just take off like wildfire, fire, flower. Well, I guess, I mean, it is a gardening channel. So that did kind of make sense. And then put the cloche on top, like the, the cloche thing. Put that on top, make sure the humidity stays high. You should be good. Leslie, try it out. Let me know how it works. I've always had good results with that. I do have one question about Clasier onions. So I planted them about three weeks ago. About half of them come up. I'm curious what the next step is. Do I need to transplant on sub point or leave in small pods till spring? Uh, that's Nadine. And you could pot up. Um, just don't let the roots get too exposed to air, if you will. So they can stay quite compact for quite a while. But once things start getting a little bit better, you get a lot of excess roots, then that's when you, you would pot up. I, uh, I personally kind of pot up into something like this, like just a tray and I'll put them in, cover it with soil. And then I will actually leave them in like a tray like this, like 50 of them until spring. And yeah, you can cut them. There's no, so by the way, that's an aloe feather there. Um, you, when you cut the onions, it doesn't help with bulb formation. It doesn't do really anything like that. It just makes it more manageable. It makes it more manageable to plant. It makes it more manageable to water and deal with. It doesn't do anything for the bulb, but it makes the plant more manageable. So if you want to cut them and put them in a, in a thing together. Hi, R uh, oh, Ravindra. I'm so sorry if I said that wrong. Here from India and telling you, you guys are international. This, everyone watches this channel. Thank you for the detailed video. It was very informative. Could I request that you share the composition of sunshine mix number four? I would like to create one here as the product is not available. So sunshine mix number four, the composition of it is long fiber peat. So in your case from India, I'd go with poir. I would not import peat just like I would not in my opinion, this is my opinion. No one has to listen to what I'm saying. It's the internet. You could just not listen to me. My opinion is that uh, I don't see palm trees outside with coconuts on them, or I don't see coconut trees. I, just, I don't see coconuts. And so I don't, it doesn't make sense for me to import coconut coir in mass to do the job for me when peat is like really close and it is properly managed in Canada. I promise you that. I've toured these bogs before. I actually had to do entire soil courses on these bogs before. The ones in Canada are managed just fine. UK, different story. Canada, they're managed properly. So yeah, I just, I don't see the point in me importing coconut coir, but for you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't import peat. I would use coconut coir in your case. So what you'd wanna use is a long fiber or a longer fiber, uh, coconut coir. And then you would want to put in some lime for your uh, buffer or gypsum as well, lime and gypsum. And that, I mean, you're gonna have to do some testing to see what that ratio looks like. There will be very little to no extra nutrients. That comes from your fertilizer and sunshine mix number four, but the big, the big key that I find with sunshine mix number four is perlite that is medium, medium sized perlite, like a chunky perlite and a lot of it. So if you physically look at sunshine mix number four, you can see a lot of perlite, like every, you know, when they're like sprinkle the fertilizer for your lawn this way and they give you like a graph and they kind of show like all the little dots, like the perlite is about that far away. So there's one here, there's like, it's a, half an inch, every half inch, there's a chunk of perlite and a big chunk. So that is, yeah, that's what I would, that is what that is. Uh, my Rusty Garden, another very regular, uh, very regular commenter. Yes, it's too bloody cold and snow in the forecast for early March. If you're in Saskatchewan, you're probably in the middle of this 
ridiculous snowstorm that's happening. Calgary got it too. We we're just getting it today. It's next level. Uh, Patty King says, I'm growing perennials. I can get germination, but it's the time from germination to getting plants large enough to plant outside where things go wrong. Plenty of sun and water grow outdoors. Slowly they die off even when a few inches tall. Suggestions. Okay. Getting the plants large enough to plant outside is where things go wrong. Uh, I don't know. So this is... I'm thinking it's excess moisture. It could be uh, your compost or the material you're growing in. So if you don't do a bioassays test, and I... I swear I've done videos on this before, but um, essentially if you don't make sure that it's not contaminated in some way, you do kind of run the risk of that happening. Um, what I would do if I was you is I would start my seeds, whatever is going on right now. I would take them and I would bump them up and I would bump them up into and you guys are just gonna burst out laughing or you're gonna throw something at the TV. I bump them up to Sunshine Mix number four. Because if you're overwatering, if you have a bioassay, if you didn't do a bioassay and you're dealing with a contaminant issue, um, that, will fix, that will fix the problem. Uh, that's what I would do. As long as your light and stuff is in check, and then when you go to plant them outside, I would, you know, harden them off and stuff, but I would use the container method that I've done videos on before. So you like cut, use containers, recycle containers, uh, coffee can, cans, five gallon pail buckets, you name it, um, put those on the soil surface. That's what I would do. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Neuterick, you commented before, getting soil temperature up in my house is very dusty and heat mats aren't enough. Is there a cheap way to create more heat? Again, top of your fridge, near your oven, that sort of thing. Procrastination mode, Steve says. Yes, absolutely. You guys are, so these were commented like seven days ago, five days ago, and I'm like liking them now. So anyone who is, I'm actively, you're, I'm, as I'm doing this, I'm like doing my classic thumbs up with a heart. So if you're looking back, that's what I'm doing right now on my Friday night, no, Saturday night. That's how exciting I am. Kelly LeBlanc, the soil in my onions, added worm castings, have fuzzy white patches on top. I don't think I should be worried, but what is it? Anyway, yeah, that's just normal. Um, that is mycelium, that's fungi, that's decomposition, that will happen when you use organic material. Nothing to worry about. It's when it gets like black or green, not green, like not the algae, but like green fuzzy, like rotten fruit green, if that makes sense, or cheese, that's when you are, need to be like, oh no. Um, yeah, no, that's normal. That's just stuff decomposing. Uh, if you don't like it, vermiculate on top. I know, I don't sound like a broken record. It'll make a big difference and or a fan uh, just to help with rates of evapotranspiration which I have a video coming out on Friday about soil zones. And we talk a lot about uh, major soil zones and which one you may be in. And one of the very common themes of that video is evapotranspiration. So, uh, Dan Da Vuzel, another very regular commenter, uh, germinating certain seeds, general why lettuce and lavender never start for me. Ah, uh, yes, they can be a pain. I mean, quality of seed obviously matters. Lettuce does not like to be planted deep. Uh, that is one if you start, start in vermiculite. Um, same with lavender. It's kind of one of those surface ones. Start in vermiculite, heat mat, really intense light, and you tend to be, to tend to be off to the races. Wayne says over seed, over watering seedlings. Missed, missed them. I did a video on this, um, but missed them. Seriously, it makes a world of difference for you. And then vermiculite 
on top will help soak up kind of that extra moisture. Stop bottom watering, stop watering with a watering can. Mist, 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 and you'll be good. And you can't overdo it with misting. You can do it like once, twice a day, you'll be fine. Uh, Sathanas, oh, he, you always, I guess maybe that's not your real name, Sathanas, but you all always comment on my videos as well. Uh, no questions, but I got a ton of Carolina Reapers sitting, seedlings working right now. Wouldn't mind sending you some from the US and Canada. I'll allow that, does, oh yeah, no, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, he's saying he's got a bunch of Car a ton of Carolina Reapers and he wants to send me some. I'd have to come visit you and then somehow get it over the border without getting caught. Soil and plants are like the tin seeds actually are like the things that you need so much regulation and so much paperwork to get over borders. Animals too is another one. Um, but yeah. It's pretty serious. You, it's funny because like when you do travel internationally and you work in soil science, in particular, like when I work for Bayer, yes, I know. I, someone called me a Monsanto plant in one of my videos. They're like, you're a Monsanto plant. I guess me saying I work for Bayer at some point in my life, I won't say when, um, it probably doesn't help the claim or the the notion that I'm a Monsanto plant maybe it just lends credence to me being a Monsanto plant Penelope Douglas credence don't judge me um Liav just trying to game if I could start seeds outside or not lol where do you live that you could start seeds outside right now are you in California because if you are I'm up for adoption come get me Wayne says overwatering seedlings. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Rising from the ashes also comments on this video all the time. Just got my seeds from M.I. Gardner. Looking forward to starting my winter sowing this week. Nice, 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 nice. And Caleb, the last statement of the day is fungus gnats, smiley face with the hiding their eyes. Um, yeah, uh, organic material, compost, from vermicasts, manures in your potting soil will cause fungus ants. If you don't want that, then switch to liquid, organic, or synthetic fertilizer with an inert soil. So sunshine mix number four, um, mix number two, um, something that's devoid of organic material. And yes, I realize this. Someone's like comment on my video on fungus. I think it was a fungus net video where I was like, these potting soils don't have organic material in them. I get that peat is organic. I organic material. I get that coconut coir is organic material. Trust me, I may be not smart sometimes. My husband and many people around me would agree my street smarts are zero. But I I realize that what I'm saying is organic material like organic compost and that sort of things. Um, but yes, peat and coconut coir are organic. They're just inert organics, I guess you could say. Not inert in the sense that they are useless to gnats. They are to a degree, but they have really tough material. And it's not easy for fungus gnats to get their job done in coir or peat. So we tend to see less volume of gnats and that sort of thing in that case. And yeah, so I would do that. And it also do like sand on top, it, particularly if it's an indoor setting, like a sand or a pebble, quite a thick layer of it, like one, two inches of it. And you should be fungus gnat free, if you still aren't fungus gnat free. Nematodes, nematodes, predatory nematodes are great. I personally love them. There's, I like the nematodes brand, but there's pot poppers, as well as a brand that's predatory mites or predatory ne predatory nematodes grub grenade is predatory mites and uh, yeah it works wonderfully and you know nematodes i mean okay let's just i'll say this and then we'll go um nematodes are one of those bugs if you will that you can use like do your research but you can use to control slugs snails ants <laughs> mealies, 
uh, fungus gnats, soil borne, find the nematode that kicks its butt, and then put it in the soil. It works great. Like a uh, grub, like cutter, the, bu the bugs that cut the, oh my gosh. There's, oh my, my brain just like friggin' left. It just gone. Oh, cutter, oh my gosh. Someone in agriculture helped me. The bugs that chew the bottoms of the plants off, particularly brassicae species. Wireworm? Brain's gone, and I'm not gonna Google it. I don't care. Um, that, those as well, you can get, those you can get grubs. They're, yeah, grubs that take out those guys. And then uh, predatory mites are my other one that I like to use. That's biological. Biologicals are very effective, very effective. Uh, the issue is that they're biologicals and so they don't transport well in the winter in Canada, unfortunately, and they're alive. So they do die. They have definitely have an expiry date, but Grub Grenade, they're an awesome Canadian company. Nemonites is also a Canadian company. So thanks for watching. I enjoyed hanging out with you guys. If you like videos like this, where we just kind of sit, chill, hang out and talk, let me know in the comments down below. I will do more of them. They just don't, the algorithm doesn't care. Everyone on the channel who like cares and like wants to interact with me and I want to interact with you, all the people who commented on the community post, that's who watches this video. We have like 60 people that watch this video and actually care. Um, but yeah, regardless. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.